Hey guys, what's up? This is T-Briz. In today's video, we're going to be working with some drum loops. We're going to be chopping them. We're going to be rearranging them. We're going to do some EQ. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use where I layer in drum samples to the drum loops to give them some harder hitting kicks, some distinct hi-hats, harder hitting snares. It's a pretty simple technique, but it goes a long way. There's a lot of other helpful tips and tricks scattered throughout the video, so stick around and watch till the end. I hope you enjoy it and you learn something. Let's get into the tutorial. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is find some drum loops that have some parts in them that I wanna use or chop up. One of the sites I like to visit to get really good drum loops is the Drum Broker, uh, hiphopdrumsamples.com. Today in this video, we're mostly going to be using Jeremy Page, Break Habits, Volume 4, Cassette Edition. Not sponsored by them at all. Just sharing this information. So I got those drum loops downloaded. I've been poking around. I think today we're going to use the BHC Break 6, 97 BPM. I love that they tell you what the BPM is because I've already gone and set it in my tempo up here. So when we drag and drop these in, they snap right to the playlist grid, no problem. If we pull this in, it snaps right to the grid. One of the things I love about this loop pack is we're on break six, right? I look at this. Inside of the break six folder, he's got 10 different loops. Every single one of these loops has a similar beat pattern with little variations. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's listen to loop one. Little fill at the end there. Now let's listen to this one. Little extra snare hit different fill at the end but those two easily seamlessly if you were to take loop one and throw it in the playlist which we already have in the playlist and then we take loop two and put it after and we play this back to back someone might drag and drop these into the playlist just like this and say that's it I got my loop, that's fine. I could start making a beat around this right now. But sometimes you might not want that, and maybe you wanna customize your loops a little bit by chopping them up. For instance, I really like this part right here, where there's these extra snare hits at the end. A little snare roll at the end there, I like that. So let's take that, let's chop it. We're gonna hit C on the shortcut keys. Also, if you're going to be using shortcut keys, make sure you have this turned off. This is typing keyboard to piano keyboard. If you have this turned on and you're in here and you hit C, it's actually going to play a note, which, listen, if I hit C right now, see, it starts playing since we have this selected in the channel rack. This is technically a sampler. It's got this audio clip loaded, but if you press C on the keyboard, it's playing this in a different key. Uh, so let's uncheck this. So now when we hit C, we get our shortcut keys. So if I were to hit B, now I'm on the brush. If I'm gonna hit C, now I'm on the cut tool. So let's cut, let's cut. Let's take this and make this our main loop. There's another trick I like to do. I don't always do it, but I'll show it off because it might be helpful. Um, in this arrangement, I can leave the drum loops that I'm working with. So you know what? Since I have drum loop one here, let me move drum loop two down here. So it's drum loop two is on track two. Let me go to arrangement, let's add one, and let's call this uh, chopped drums. So now we got another arrangement that we're gonna use to build. Um, you don't have to do it like this, you can build it all in here if you want, you know. If you hit T and you like mute these, um, you can slowly build and mute things and unmute things, but whatever, lots of different ways to do it. I could talk about that all day. So let's put this in here, let's, let's do this. I think I want a drum loop. That's gonna be four bars long. Let's listen to the four bars and see how we're feeling this. Yeah, I like the length of four bars, okay? But here's the thing. In my head, I like to refer to this as like a straight loop. I'm basically just looping this one piece over and over and over and over. That's fine. Some people like that. You can literally just take this one bar beat and loop it and it'll be fine. But I like to add little variations. A great spot for those variations or the different fills is at the end of the second bar and at the end of the fourth bar. So I've actually gone ahead and already found the pieces that I want. So I found something in loop five that I like. Let's listen to that. If 
first of all, loop five is dope on its own. So I'm actually gonna go back to this arrangement. I'm gonna take loop five and put it out here. And while I'm at it, let me name this arrangement. I like to stay organized because arrangement one is actually, the purpose of it is the uh, full drum loops. This is where we're keeping the full version of the drum loops that we are chopping up in another arrangement. Oh, we always have them here for reference. By the way, I'm holding shift and I'm dragging here so I can highlight this section. And then when I hit space to play, yep. As two things I really like about this. One is the loop itself. I love it. It's amazing. Two, there's a very simple open hi-hat piece that I want to blend in to our chopped up beat. Listen for the open hi-hat. It should be right around here. Let's see. Let's zoom in on this and take a look. Hold control mouse wheel and then alt mouse wheel. Let's see. This. That. That's it. And then there's another one. So let's get that hi-hat. That's really all I want to do. I want to do something with that hi-hat because I just want a simple variation on the other beat. We're not going too crazy today. The thing is you can apply what we're learning here and make some wild beats. You can pull the fills out. You can mix and match fills with beats, create your own fills, but we're going to keep it simple today just to get the techniques across. So I'm going to hit C. I'm going to do my cut tool. Let's go over here to the magnet and let's change this. So we can get a little bit more precise with our slices, have the grid help us out. Let's see, what's here? Just that. Let's cut this. Let's hit B. Left click on it. We'll go over to our chopped drums. And like I said, at the end of the second bar is where I want to put that little fill. So let's test it out. Let's drop it in here. Let's control mouse wheel in. Let's zoom. Let's, uh, let's just pull this back. And I'm going to leave it below so it stands out because I know I'm experimenting with this part. And let's listen to it. That's it. That's the simple difference I wanted. Instead of hearing this at the end of every single bar, the little drum roll. Now at the end of that first bar, we have the drum roll. At the end of the second bar, we have a variation, very simple variation, which is just the open eye hat. Let's listen to it again. I like that. So using the same concept to resolve the four bar loop, I'm gonna do something similar at the end of this one. We have options. You wanna keep it really simple? Use the same exact thing that we just did. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna make the fourth bar a little bit different than the end of the second bar. Let's see what we can do with that. This is okay. I'm just gonna, this is another variation. So I think maybe if I cut this back, and we take this one and we put it here. Let's see what this sounds like. I mean, that's kind of cool. What about, let's go to the magnet. Let's change it to half beat. What about if we left, let's drag that over. What if we left the kick before the open hi-hat here? That's okay. You see what I mean? This is the concept is you play around, you find what you like. Let's listen to this entire chopped up drum loop. And then we're going to EQ it because actually while we listen to this, listen for the buzz. These are cassette tape drums, right? That was what uh, the branding of the drum pack was. If you know anything about cassettes is they always had a little bit of sound, a little bit of a natural noise, which is cool. It adds some texture to these drums and makes them a little bit dirtier, but for me, it's a little too much. I want to cut some of that out. So listen for that little buzzing sound. Let's make it even more apparent. First of all, we got to pull up the mix window. Uh, we have not routed these drums yet. So let's put them all on two. Every single one of these goes to two, not three, two. There we go, two. I'm going to do a little rename. We're going to call this drum loop. Okay. Let's pull out the fruity parametric EQ. Two. Now we're gonna play with the EQ while these drums play. Listen for that hiss. I'm gonna pull the high end up to really exaggerate that hissing sound, that buzzing sound that we're hearing. Listen. You hear that? This side's okay. Right here. And let's, uh, let's cut it down. First of all, let's reset this. Much better. And now let's pull this down. Now, by doing this, we're also losing some of the drum sound, right? We're losing some of the high end. 
So really, it's up to you and your ear to dial in exactly how much of this you want to cut. If you want to cut it at all, some people like that analog sound. Some people want to keep that in there. Additionally, we're going to be adding a lot of other instruments over this when we fully flesh out a beat. Now might not even be the time to EQ this because in the mix, you might not even hear it as much or it might add a texture to the beat that you like. That cassette tape sound, that analog sound. So this is more of just for the sake of this video type thing, talking about EQ and what the possibilities are. It's up to you in the end to dial that in and figure out what you really want to do with it. Or if you're just looking to shape these drum sounds and make them tailored to your liking. I'm going to play with the EQ for a second and see if we can do anything else to maybe shape these a little bit. Let's see. I'm actually going to right click. I'm going to go to order. I'm going to put this on steep. There you go. I like that a little bit better. Let's see. Uh, put out something over here in the 136 range. I kind of like that. Pull some of the, to my ear, some of the muddier sounds out of it. We could even go here and do tight. Uh, we could do a, a steep and cut the rumbly low lows out of this, like that sub bass. Maybe take this one and focus it in a little bit more around this frequency range. And again, this is a little bit premature because it's not in the mix yet. All right, so I'm going to share one last tip about working with drum loops. This is something I do quite often. We're going to layer drum samples over the drum loop. One way I think of it is like this. The drum loop is already a human being playing the drums who get that great humanistic sound. But say I want that kick to really slap. I'm going to layer a kick over the kick that's there. One that makes it hit the way I want it to hit. One that makes it thump, whatever. The most common three things I will layer are the snare, a kick, and a hi-hat at least. So for this video, we're going to throw a kick on here and maybe a hi-hat. I think we'll leave the snare the way it is because this video is running pretty long already. Just for the sake of showing you the technique, let's, let's get into it. So we'll get a kick that really thumps just to over-exaggerate this technique. Normally, for the sound selection process, I would actually do something like this where I play the beat and then I will click on kicks to see how they blend in. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to over click it so it really stands out. Ready? Cool. Let's put the crispy kick in. This is from Drum Weapons Volume 4. So we'll take the crispy kick and let's just throw a closed hi-hat on there. Same thing for sound selection. Play it and then... Um, mess around with some hi-hats all right let's just use this one you know and let's move the hi-hat over to four so we got the kick on three we got the hi-hat on four we're gonna do a new pattern called hi-hat let's start with the hi-hat because that's easy let's just put the hi-hat we'll go to c5 one two three four that should be fine for what we're doing today and then let's head over to the playlist pull our hi-hat out Actually, I do want a couple extra notes in here. So we're going to go like this. Let's see what that sounds like. And we're not going to go crazy with the velocities or anything. Maybe pan it a little bit. To widen it. Maybe drop the volume. I like to do a quick EQ to make it fit into the drum loop a little bit better. Let's cut the low off. Let's actually Yeah, I feel like that sits in the mix a little bit better, this drum mix. Cool. 
So that's it. You want to get crazy and you want to go in there and adjust it and make the hi-hats a little bit offbeat to make it sound more humanistic. That's great. But we already have the drums that are humanistic itself. So this is just adding another layer to the drums. Now let's do the kicks. Let's put one right here and let's play it. Oh, first of all, I probably want to pull this out here. Yeah, let's put it like this. Let's put our kick pattern right here. And you know what? Let's hold shift and drag so we can just loop within this one section. And let's try to sync up our kicks. I pretty much just use my ear on this part. And you know what? Let's hold control and drag over this. Alt, mouse wheel up to make the velocity go up. While we're doing this, we really want to hear our kick louder than the drums so we could tell if it's in sync. Like, let's see. Yeah, now I can hear it standing out. And let's start with the easy ones. Ba boom. So where are our kicks going to be? It's like boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom. That's all we got to do. Boom, ba boom. So here it is perfectly quantized, but we want to try to get that. No, that's not right. So you see, this is the part where we're going to try to dial it in a little bit. So first of all, this one needs to go here and we'll bring the volume down because a double kick, ba boom, ba boom, like that. Usually the first one's a little bit lower. Let's just hold down shift, pull these over here and let's see what that sounds like. Maybe we make this one a little bit off time. Maybe hold alt and drag this one a little bit here. Let's see. No, it's maybe more I'm holding alt and dragging. Yeah. Use your ear. It doesn't have to be perfectly on time. It doesn't have to be perfectly off time. It just has to sound good. If you listen to it and you're like, yeah, that sounds good. Usually don't touch it then. I think that sounds good. Let's leave it like that. Let's pop over to the playlist. Let's just duplicate this. I think the kicks are pretty much in sync on the uh, last two bars of this. And uh, let's listen to the whole thing and see what we got. And now I could bring this kick down. It doesn't have to be as loud. I really wanted it to stand out so we could hear what we were doing there. But let's blend it in. Here, here, I'm going to pull it all the way out. We got no kick. Now let's bring in our kick. Now it's hitting. Actually sounds pretty good with this kick. Normally I might EQ that kick a little bit to get it to sit in the mix to make it feel like it's part of the cohesive drum sound. It doesn't stand out as like, oh, that drum doesn't sound like it fits, but it kind of just fits on its own. It adds that extra thump, it hits. Now, if you wanted to throw a snare on this to really make it like the snare pop too and make that hit maybe a little bit more of a boom bap sound, you could. We're not gonna do that. I think we went way too long on this video. If you watch my videos, you know that sometimes I just talk way too much. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to shut the hell up. Go hit the like button, do the notifications thing. Appreciate it guys, have a great day, peace out.